You can edit one left. If God makes you right, ain't no way in the world he can make you wrong. So when you start thinking you're wrong, you're wrong. They gotta help. Talk with the sleep on. I'm not joking. You might heard what I just said? When you're wrong about yourself, you're wrong. God's not wrong. You're wrong. You need confidence all the time. Satan walks about like a lion, seeking whom he can divide. Can you imagine a, what they call those things, a gazelle walking around like this? I can't run, I don't play this. All well, the other ones like this. He got the same legs, and he walking like this. There's nothing I can hop like the rest of them. That lion be like this. Oh, you can't hop. But you sure can taste good. You better think right about yourself. I can lead a stone cold, murdering, prostituting sinner to Christ in a moment. But you get a Christian that made one mistake, they be like, oh, I can't get out from this. Oh. But it's a murderer saying, okay, I'll take Jesus. But here you are walking with the Lord, you just diary it on yourself, and you go, I can't go nowhere. Because you don't know all things work together for good. You better realize when you think wrong about yourself, you're wrong. Amen. 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 I'm okay, yes. Ooh, I'm trying. They, they give me two dollars if I can. Jude chapter 1, verse 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Now he can pre now this is something that you need to understand spiritually. Just because you fat doesn't mean he didn't keep you from fall. Alright. Now watch this now. Watch this little twist. He can actually keep you from falling even if you fell. Well, can I explain it then? Because he's able to present you faultless. So yo, you think oh, I fell and ha, halo got cracked, ha, wrinkled all in my gown, ha. He's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless. Man tell you, you're a devil dog. You're, you're the bride of Satan. You're a whore demoniac. But God is able to present you faultless. Who are you going to trust? Your man, your woman, your dead dog, or a true God? You got to walk under this Christian grace. He's able to present you faultless. I know it bothers you, right? Because you want to be, you want to judge somebody. I want to judge somebody, somebody. I need to feel better by judging somebody. I dot my eyes and cross my teeth and this little rat getting up in here. Religion well, will kill every one of you. Makes you want to put somebody down so you can be put up. And it resides in your flesh. Amen, amen. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before the presence of the glory of his glory with exceeding joy. When you stand in front of God, he's going to look at you like, I am so glad you yes. made it. Yes. You're, you're going to be like this. Yeah. Jack the Ripper. Amen. He said, man, you don't know what happened? None of that stuff comes up here. See, once you got born again, none of that stuff come up here. You might have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, but God doesn't see what you see. Yes, he's talking to all of us. Nobody want to admit it. As nasty as some of you are, you will not be completely nasty forever. I had 
an analogy, and some of y'all can understand that. It's called nappy hair. Yes. <laughs> nappy hair comes when two hairs tangle up. They were minding their business, lying there, and over a process of time, they just twist and tick out. <laughs> Because you're on the earth, some things are going to just knock you up. People are just going to get on your nerve, rub you the wrong way. But a little heat and a little cold. Will straighten it out. You're going to mingle with the wrong person. You're going to get entangled with the wrong situation. But there is a God. And you'll try to comb every nap out of your head. And some of you are going to get jail. <laughs> Think about it. Come on, man, Deacon Edwin. Let me show you some jail. Deacon Edwin's going to be criticism. Now try to criticize. Just try to grab it. That's the jab. It's called the Holy Ghost. People are going to try to entangle you and say, you did it all wrong. God ain't coming through for you. I got jail. You know not, though. You ain't tangling me with your friend of God, I believe. To heaven. You're not taking your spouse to heaven. If they can say God will take them. You need to walk free in the earth right now. Don't none go with me yet when I follow. I love my wife, but trust me, today she go to heaven, she ain't gonna be looking for me. She might look for Sydney, but she won't be looking for me. <laughs> Don't anybody here married? Some of you can't wait till the lease is over. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of long lease. Don't mean you don't love the person, but it's like, hey, I'm about to be out. But listen, spouses, don't mean you don't love them. It's just a reality. You have enough. Unless you got married at five, and you can you know, but I'm telling you, after 13, you can think on your own. And your spouse don't. Yes, yes. I want to go to the store. No, I want you to come. I didn't go to the bathroom. No, you know. <laughs> Show me you love me. I'm, I'm going to the bathroom myself. If you love me, you keep, you keep my coming <laughs> Marriage is a terrible thing to this. I know it's funny, but it's still true. Amen. Now let's get out. Let's, 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 let's look throughout the history of the Word of God at some scenarios where God had a plan where man messed up. Well, the main one was little baby boy Joseph. Baby boy Joseph just told his dream. Like any other little kid, you know, just a dream. But they gave him a hint the first time. You're bragging. You're saying that we're going to serve you. All he did was get the dream. Then he came with another dream. And his mother and father's involved with it now. And he might, he was minding his own business, and it's not his fault that his father only loved him. My God. See, let me tell you something. You need to thank God. Some of you that, that have different children from different parents, uh -huh. you need to thank God your, your children's father is God. Amen. You need to thank God because let me tell you a story. Because fathers are different. Yeah. Joseph is the example of the, uh, 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 a father who kept his heart in one place. Yeah. Yeah. And all he wanted was Rachel. Mm. And when Rachel had babies, he didn't care about the other 10 kids that everybody else had. He only was concerned about that little Jojo. And God knew it. So God said, you ain't going to do that and get away with it. Yeah. Amen. It wasn't Jojo's fault. Told your mind has been a ton of dreams. <laughs> so his brothers 
knew that his father preferred him. To keep in mind, the end of this message is that you might have messed some things up, but God's going to get you out. Amen. Just keep that in mind because you're going to get convicted along the way. But don't stay in conviction. Right. Little Jojo wrote his own, what do you call it when you go to jail? Never mind. He wrote his own warrant. His father asked him, go tell me what your brother is doing. He came back and squealed on him. You squeal her, and then you're going to tell us a dream? And father loves you more? Wasn't JoJo's fault making those mistakes, doing those things? But at the end, JoJo tells his brother, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Come on, stay there. Let's get a little JoJo for a few more minutes. Now, now, now look what happened. His brother says, here he comes. This is his brothers. First thing they said was, let's kill him. They didn't say, let's play hide and go seek. Like your family did. Like mine did. I know my father was a king in Africa. He left me a home. <laughs> he played hide and go seek and somebody from immigration came and got him. And I was raised by these kids and this, this black man, this black woman in a project. My parents are African kings and queens. Alright. Black history man. But you know what I'm saying? They didn't hide and go see. They took that boy. And they, the first one said, let's kill him. And the brother said, nah, man, let's don't kill him. Let's sell him. You don't know the plans against you. But God does. That's why you need to just walk with some kind of confidence. If you see somebody had a gun on you, they, guess what? God's got a bigger gun on them. Think about it. Are we ever going to believe there is a God? So this little Joe Joe ended up in a prison, right? And then, I want you to hear this, he has a gift of interpreting dreams. But he asks this guy, he gives these guys an interpretation of the dreams, and he says, when you get out, remember me. I want you to hear this. And guess what? They did not remember him, because if they would have remembered him, he might have gotten out and just became a little Egyptian. But they only remembered him when God said it's time to remember him. And then the number one Egyptian needed a dream interpreter. Thank you, Deacon Cleo. So you're not understanding. If he would have got out, yep. when he asked to get out, he would have never got his family out. Some of you think, you know what, God, I need you to move now. Ha, now, God, ha, to move now, God, now. And God said, you ain't ready for me to move now. You still don't like your mother. You hate your father. You want to kill your kids. Yes. <laughs> if I move now, nobody will get help. Yes. I'm preaching better than six of you. Yes. So God moves when it's right. Yes. You just got to allow him to do the fixing. Yes. I take turkeys out of the oven when they're done. Yes. God ain't going to deal some raw meat to the society. Yes. So now here's Jojo. He said, remember me. And then the Pharaoh had a dream, and, and then the, the, the baker was like, oh, it was my fault. This guy told me to remember him, but I couldn't remember him. You, it wasn't for you to remember him. God put him back in your mind. Don't be sitting in your house crying. Nobody thinks about me. Nobody care about me. They're on lockdown. If they thought about you, they might get you in trouble. Can we just go back down the road? You remember on Friday night, you thought about somebody? And guess what, Saturday morning? No, they were in trouble with you. Because you thought about it. God's got the right people locked out of your mind. And you got the right people who locked you out of their mind. Until the right time. Preach 
right. And then JoJo grows up, gets some kids and everything, and he's running the, the, the all of Egypt. And his brothers come to him. And in the process of time, his anger is gone. And he said to them, you meant it for evil. But God meant it for good to save our posterity. Yeah. And now, you know, they go into Egyptian bondage. Not three days. 400 years. You got to ask yourself, why would God tell um, Abraham? Here's Abraham. Now, you would think God would say, you know, Abraham, because you love me and you serve me. The world is crazy and I'm going to favor your children and they're going to be great. He said, no. They're going to be in slavery. And then I'm going to deliver them. So you got to ask yourself a question. Why would he tell this to Abraham before they even born? He tell Abraham ahead of time. See, we know that all things work together for good to them that are the call. Yeah. Because you're called, he's going to tell you in advance what you're going to go through. Yeah. People get married, especially women, and their mother never taught them how to listen. Their mother never taught them how to cook. Their mother never taught them how to clean. Mother never, mother never taught them nothing. Then they get there with that man, that man assumes they know. Yeah. You're not marrying your sister. Yeah. When you marry a man, a man lately thinks you know everything his mother knew. <laughs> he don't want to marry his mother, but he thinks you're going to be my mother. I get hungry, you're going to help me eat. I need a bath, you're going to show me where the water is. I have an attitude, you're going to say it's okay, baby. It's latent inside of every man. So when you're called to be a wife, somebody had to teach you before you ain't even a woman. When you became a child of God, God has been trying to teach you before you get into the battle that you're going to win. So here they are in Egyptian bondage. And they start to complain. But now it's time for them to be delivered. How can you be a deliverer complaining? <laughs> oh, man, I can't get a job. And, you know, my boss made me want to work eight and a half hours. I just want to work eight hours. I want my time off. That's a complaint. Amen. People ain't got no jobs. So you want to complain. The Egyptians was told, oh, you got so much time to complain, find your own straw. Make bricks with a straw. Some people are complaining with a child. Soon they might hear this, complain without one. <laughs> Think about it. Because the human nature is suicidal. So now here they are in Egyptian bondage all those years. And you have to ask yourself, why so many years? Well, God promised Abraham that he's going to give him land, vineyards he didn't plant, houses he didn't build. But it's going to take some time. You got to hear me, people. While his people are in prison, the cursed Canaanites are building the greatest land for the living. You know, y'all think that I'm on crack. You can't even pay your rent. But there's a brand new house Amen. just being built. Amen. 